If the reacting molecules have a total number of pi electrons equal to 4n, where n is any positive integer that can also be the value 0, then no thermal cycloaddition reaction will actually take place. A photochemical cycloaddition reaction will take place. Now, even though a thermal cycloaddition reaction will not take place when our two molecules are in the presence of heat, a reaction will take place that is a stepwise reaction. So basically, we have two steps in this particular reaction. The question is, what is this reaction and what are or is the product of this reaction? So let's suppose we have a system of reactants that have a total number of electrons equal into 4n, where n in this case is equal to 1. So we have 4 pi electrons within these two alkenes. So we have two identical alkenes, more specifically we have 1, 2 di substituted, cis 1, 2 di substituted ethene molecules. Now they basically react in a reaction that contains two steps and the final product is the same as in the photochemical cycloaddition reaction. So we form a cyclobutane. The question is, what is the stereochemistry of this cyclobutane and what is our reaction mechanism? So in the first step, we basically want to determine what the highest occupied molecular orbital is, and then we want to determine what the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital is. Because when these two reactants react on the thermal conditions, the HOMO reacts with our LUMO. Now, because we're dealing with ethene, we have two pi orbitals. One is called the pi bonding an, um, orbital, and the, one, and the other one is called the pi anti-bonding. So the one that is lower in energy on the thermal conditions contains our two electrons. So basically, the two electrons will be found in the lower in energy one on the thermal condition. So these are two electrons. So that means this will be our highest occupied molecular orbital. This will be the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So each one of these reactants has these two orbitals. So let's suppose that this is the molecule that will use its highest occupied molecular orbital to interact with the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the second alkene molecule, of the second ethene. So that means the reaction is between the pi of one and the pi star of the other one. So basically it looks something like this. So let's draw our sigma bond. We have our negative section of the wave function, the blue lobe pointing up here, the blue lobe here points up, but here it points downward as, as seen here. Now the green one the green will point downward here, the green will point downward here. And so we also have these R groups. So we're dealing with this one. This R group here will basically point like so out of the board. This R group here will point into the board in the other direction. This R group here and the second molecule will point in this direction while this R group here will point in this direction here. So the question is, how exactly can these lobes rotate so that we form a sigma bond between these carbons and these carbons? Well, this is not a one-step concerted mechanism. There are two steps. So that means in one step, we'll form one bond. In the second step, we'll form a second bond. So let's suppose that our lobes rotate in this direction and these lobes rotate in this direction. So we're going clockwise here and counterclockwise here. What exactly will be the result of this rotation? So we're under thermal conditions. So basically if this blue ro uh, lobe rotates this way and this 
blue lobe also rotates in the same basically direction or actually in the opposite direction they will overlap and form a bond between this carbon and this carbon at the same time when they overlap these R groups will also change orientation so in this case we form a bond here because we have an overlap between these blue orbitals. Now, when this, rot when this rotates, this R group, which points out of the board, will rotate with it, and so it will now point upward. So let's say it points upward as shown. Now, when this rotates this way, this will rotate downward, so the R group will also rotate downward. And so here, the R group will basically point downward. Now, what about here? Here, no bond is formed because what we basically have is a blue lobe, a negative section of the wave function here, and a positive section of the wave function on the other side, opposing side. And a positive and negative basically means they cancel out and they form our anti-bonding interaction. And so there is no bond formed between this, these two carbons. And so we're simply going to have one electron in this orbital one electron in this orbital but, but because their signs are opposite no bond is actually formed and so this is a di radical so this looks something like this we have our bond formed here but here we have the two electrons because we have a di radical now what are the orientations of these r groups well when this rotates this way the r group basically points up when this rotates this way the R group will point downward. Now, in the second step of this reaction, once again, on the thermal conditions, one of these bonds will rotate 180 degrees as to basically rotate our green section onto this side so that our greens can interact. And now we have positive and positive, so we form a bond. Or this doesn't rotate, but this bond rotates to take the blue and bring it onto this side so that the blue will interact after our rotation and will form a bond. In either case, after the second step, we form our bond. So let's say this doesn't change, it remains at R. This remains R pointing up. Let's say this does not rotate but let's say this does rotate. So if this rotates 180 degrees, this will change orientations and it will go from pointing down to pointing up. So we see that one product is a cyclobutane that contains one R group pointing downward, this R group pointing upward, this one pointing upward, and this one will also point upward. So there are actually three more products that, uh, that can form that are also cyclobutanes but which have slightly different stereochemistries. Now I'm not going to go through each one and show you how each one is formed. I'm only going to show you this one here but I will tell you which ones are formed. So we basically have the second cyclobutane that looks something like this. So on opposing sides, we have two pointing up and two pointing downward. So now two of our groups will point up, the other two will point downward, and the final one looks like this. All of them are, are, are either pointing up or pointing downward. Doesn't mean, doesn't matter which one we choose, they're both exactly the same. So we have one, one, two, three, four products that are formed. And all these isomers form as a result of the fact that we have a diradical species that exists. The diradical will be able to rotate its bonds and as a result of the two-step mechanism, we change the stereochemistry of the final product. However, as we saw in the photochemical cycloaddition reaction between these molecules, because there's only one step, a concerted reaction mechanism, we form only two of these isomers. But in this case, because we have two steps, we form all four possible isomers.